Hello children, I welcome you on this online teaching learning session. My dear children, today I am going to teach you a beautiful poem composed by a great poet Leslie Norris. Dear children, it has been taken from standard tenth from the book First Plant. Firstly, let me tell you about the poem A Tiger in the Jew. Here the poet has tried to show the contrast between a tiger who is staying in the Jew and the tiger who is staying in the forest in the jungle. So a tiger in the Jew with the tiger in its natural habitat that has been compared here. My dear children, let us uh, see the poem and we will understand. First we will read the poem here. He stalks in the vivid stripes, the few steps of his gaze, on pairs of his velvet, quiet in his quiet days. So, in the first session that you see what the poet wants to say here. The poet wants to say firstly that he has been used here for whom? Tiger. So this tiger has been personified here. Personification means when animal or non-living things are given the qualities of living things. So here the tiger has been personified that's why he has been used here in place of it here. So he stalks in the vivid stripes. What is the, what is the meaning of stalks? My dear children, the meaning of stalks here, walk quietly in a threatening way when a tiger moves in a very terrorizing way, in a threatening mood. That is called stalks. So the tiger stalks in the vivid. What do you mean by vivid? Vivid means very clear. And vivid stripes. What do you mean by stripes? Where long narrow bands on his body. You must have seen the different bands that, uh, that are found on the body of a tiger. So the tiger moves in a very frightening and very threatening mode with his various stripes on his body, very clear and very bright stripes on his body. The few steps of his gaze and where where does he move he moves in the gaze because the poet is telling about the tiger who has been kept in the jew so that's why it is told here the few steps of his gaze so he would be moving in the case because you know the length of the case is limited the dimension of the case is limited that's why here the, the tiger can move only few steps in the cage. He will be going and he will be coming. On pairs of his velvet, quiet in his quiet ways. What do you mean? What does the poet mean here? Pairs of his velvet. Pairs means what do you mean by pairs here? This is the soft part. Soft part under the foot of the tiger. So pairs means here the soft part under the foot of the tiger so of his velvet so velvet means being very soft soft uh, things so it has been compared here here his uh, part under the foot has been compared with the velvet very soft things so this is metaphor here why it is metaphor here? Because there is a comparison between the pairs and the velvet, the soft thing. Here, comparison, so this is implied simply. Means when there is a comparison between two things without using so, like or as, that is called metaphor. So this is the metaphor. In his quiet days, so there are two types quiet quiet has come so this is this is called repetition 
This is the poor center student on pairs of his velvet quiet in his quiet range. So it is not, there is no punctuation here. So this is one sentence. That's why we can say this is repetition in the sentence. So first standard is clear here that the tiger is moving with his stripes, with the clear stripes, very bright stripes, very bright long narrow uh, pants. And he can move only few steps of his case in the zoo, he can move not long distance because the area is limited. All pairs of his velvet quiet in his quiet trees and on his soft part under the feet and which is just like a velvet, very soft things and very quiet. Why it is quiet? Because he cannot run very fast there. Now we will go to the second stranger. So he should be lurking in the shadow, sliding through long grass near the water pool where plump deer pass. My dear children, now the poet has come from zoo to the jungle. Here he with his imaginative wings, the poet jumps into the jungle through the Jew, he is telling, he should be lurking in the shadow. Lurking means here hiding. The tiger, tiger's natural inhabitant is, the place is jungle or the forest. So, here the poet wants to say that the tiger usually hiding himself in a shadow place, in a dark place, sliding through long grass. So what happened? It is moving. Sliding means here moving through long grass. So when it will be moving? When he finds near the water hole. Water hole where plump deer pass. So this tiger will be moving through that long grass when he finds or when he sees the plump means very fat, fat deer passing there to take the water from the water pool. So whenever the deer comes there, the tiger will be ready to just attack on the deer. So overall, the poet wants to say that this uh, tiger should be hiding in a dark place and moving through the long grass near the water pool so that he can catch the deer, the fat deer, very wet fat deer who will be coming there to take the water. So now we will be coming to the third, third paragraph. He should be snarling around the houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fence, terrorizing the village. So now also the poet is talking about the natural place of the tiger. What he, what the poet is telling, he should be snarling. What is the meaning of a snarling? A snarling is making the sound, warning sound around the houses. Houses here means villages somewhere nearby the village and at the edge of the forest at the near point of the forest and which will be very located nearby some village at the jungle's edge the poet is telling at the edge of the jungle what will happen maybe nearby some village will be located so the tiger will be giving the very terrorizing song, warning song to the villagers that he may go there. But actually the tiger doesn't go to attack the human beings because they are always ready to attack and catch their original prey, natural prey. They never try to touch human beings usually when until or unless they are disturbed by the human beings. So here Bearing his white fence, 
his claws. So, so my dear children, he is telling that uh, two long sharp teeth. Fangs means what do you mean by fangs? Two long sharp teeth at the front of the mouth of animals. So what do they carry here? Always they will be having that that teeth, sharp teeth. You must have seen that the tigers are having two sharp teeth at the front of uh, their mouths. Tigers are having that. And their claws are also their claws are also very sharp. And with that they are catching their prey. So terrorizing the village. Even the villager, the village people, they are also getting terrorized by the tigers and and when are they terrorized? When the tiger will be making sound and standing at the edge of the jungle nearby the village and they make the sound to terrorize, to create some threatening sound to the villagers. Now let us come to the next point about that. But he is locked in a concrete cell. Who is locked in a concrete cell? The tiger. Now again the poet tries to come back to the Jew. From jungle to Jew and Jew to jungle. In this poem, now in the fourth stanza, you see what does the poet wants to say there? But he is locked in a concrete cell. Who is locked? The tiger is locked in a, in the Jew, in a cemented cell in a place where he is strength behind the bars. So what happened? Who is strength? This is the tiger's strength. A strength is here metonymy. What is metonymy? Metonymy means substitute, substitute of the name of an attribute. So here a strength is here body of the full complete body of the tiger so a strength indicates here the complete body of the tiger which is so powerful that had been uh, captured here that has been imprisoned here behind the bars behind the iron rods and stalking the length of his cage what does the poet mean to, mean to say here stalking the length of his cage means they are, the tigers are walking in the case with the limited area, with the limited length, because length is limited there. And ignoring visitors, even they do not bother who are coming to watch them. They don't have much more affinity with the visitors, especially human beings, because they know that it is none but human beings who had created this problem for the tigers. So that's why they don't mind who are coming, who are going, and though they are the so source of entertainment for each and everyone who are coming in the zoo. So now here what happened? This is concrete cell. Concrete here C and C. Both the letters are repeated. So whenever the letter is repeated twice or thrice that is called alliteration. So my dear children this is concrete and cells. So this is alliteration here. And now I would like to come to the last stanza. He hears the last voice at night. The patrolling cards and steers with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. You see my dear children. Now again the poet is talking about the tiger in the Jew. He hears, who hears the tiger? Hears the last voice at night. So they hear the sound of the patrolling sound when the whenever the cars come there to see them whether the animals are safe and sound in the zoo or not. So patrolling means they are moving round and round to find out whether the animals are in the good conditions or not, whether they are safe and sound dwelling in the zoo or not. So that is the patrolling cars they are making sound and they are listening. These tigers listen the sound at night and stares with his brilliant eyes. Stares means to see with fixed eyes towards the sky. Or in the firmament, in the firmament 
they see in the sky, they see the stars with their brilliant eyes. Brilliant eyes, bright eyes. Because as you know, the cat family has very bright eyes and the tiger belongs to the cat family. So the tigers are looking at the sky, blue sky and with brilliant eyes, bright eyes and the brilliant stars. So the poet wants to say that they look towards the stars and they feel loneliness because whenever we feel loneliness we see towards the sky, oh God help me and give me freedom from this place. They also pray inside internally, they might have been praying from the God or from the uh, supernatural power that they should be also given freedom. So all of my dear children that we should know that uh, this is all about the tiger who is in the zoo and the tiger should be given, given the freedom also. The poet is uh, just uh, appealing to the people that they should be given freedom, they should be put at the right place in the jungle and they should be given freedom to enjoy their original life. So my dear children, here rhyme scheme is here A, B, C, B. Here in all the stanzas, A, B, C, B is repeated here. Why? Because like you see stripes, K's, quite rays. So K's and rays are rhyming scheme here and this is different. So that's why A, B, C, B. Like that in the all the, you can see here, shadow, grass, hole, pass. So this grass and pass are the rhyming words and shadow and hole are different. A, B, C, B. So grass is matching with pass. Like that you see in the third stanza, the house, houses, edge, fence, village. So edge and village are the same rhyming words. This is A, B, C, B. In the fourth stanza also you can see this is concrete cell, bars, case and visitors. So bars, visitors, they are same. Like that, night, cars, eyes, stars. So cars and stars are the rhyming words here. Night, night and eyes are different. So A, B, C, B. So in all the stages of the poems, A, B, C, B, rhyme scheme has have been maintained here. So my dear children, this is all about the technical side and you have got the idea about this uh, poem, A Tiger in the Zoo and overall the message is here that each and every creature of this universe has the right to live freely and the, you know the poet is giving the ideas about this and he wants to convey the message here that tigers should be also given freedom to live happily in this world. They should not be suppressed, they should not be forced by the human beings and they should be given complete enjoyment, complete freedom to live in the jungle, their original, uh, original place. Thank you children. So I think you must have understood it and I will come in the next video with the next lesson. Thank you.